Hey everybody, Andre here, and today I want to go over some really important Sibelius shortcuts that you should learn in order to make really fast workflow. So the number one most important thing that a lot of people overlook is the fact that you can actually right click and bring up this very useful menu of important functions. And so this is really, really handy because all of these text ish things and bar line things and, uh, you know, all of these different functions that you would otherwise have to go scrolling up through the top toolbar to find right at your fingertips if you just right click. So right click, right click. Uh, if you have something selected, like I'm going to have this rest selected, now it's blue. If I try right clicking, notice how it brings up a different menu. So you have a couple of different functions if you do it this way. Like for example, you can turn magnetic layout on and off. You can hide this. You can change voices. Like right now it's in voice one, but maybe I want it in voice three. Something like that. Okay. So number one most important thing is the right click function. Okay, the next most important thing, uh, something that you will end up using a lot, is the control E. Now I'm gonna have the shortcuts on the screen uh, so you can follow along. But basically what I'm doing is control E, I'm holding them. Notice how the cursor turns blue. Let me do that again. Cursor is white, control E, mm -hmm. control E, there we go. Click. Now we have this blinking bar. Now you can type. So if you just start typing right away, it'll be italicized. If you do it again, control E, and then hold control MP. Now it's italicized and bolded. Now in previous versions of Sibelius, if you did not bold your expression marking, the playback would not register the dynamic change. Very strange. I, I remember in Sibelius 5, uh, you, you, you could get into a lot of trouble and you're like, why isn't this working? I don't understand why my playback isn't registering my dynamics. dynamics. Well, here you go. But in Sibelius Ultimate, they seem to have fixed this, so it doesn't actually matter. But as standard practice, most scores, you will want to see the bolded one. It's just because it's easier to read. So get into the habit of uh, bolding your dynamics because it's just, in my opinion, it looks better. And I think most people will agree that it's just easier to look at. So if you're giving parts to players and they're trying to sight read it for the first time, much more likely that they will not miss the dynamic if it's bolded. Um, so once again, control E and then hold down control and then you can type whatever you want. So I just want to highlight what's going on just so you see uh, sort of the logic here. So I'm in the text tab and I want you to uh, check out the top of the screen here as I control E. So I'm doing control E. Notice how that expression box is now highlighted. So it's kind of nice that Sibelius tells you that, you know, if you do a shortcut, it's actually clicking on the thing. Okay, the next most important shortcut that you should learn is really similar, actually, to Control E, and it's Control T. Control T is the technique text. And notice, again, that it highlighted up top here. So Control T is for stuff like pizzicato or if you want to write out some words. Like if I wanted to say to the violinist here, play smoothly. You can write it that way. Uh, one of the things that I'll point out, so here have, we have three examples of te uh, expression text and here we have just like, I'm just gonna write red, yellow, and blue, okay? So we have three examples of expression, three examples of technique. Why this is useful is if you go into home and you find your filters, you can actually filter out your expression text and technique text. So if I hit expression text, notice how these three are selected, but these three aren't. Conversely, do the same thing here. Notice how these three are selected and these three aren't. So that opens up some doors for you uh, in terms of customizing your score. Okay, so the next most common shortcut that I use is the hide or show shortcut. This one works a little bit differently than the expression and text shortcuts, um, whereas you have to actually click the item first and then do the shortcut. So 
uh, I'm just as a random example. There's this F sharp here that I want to sh I, I want to keep in the score for whatever reason, but I want to hide it. So I've selected it, and then I'm hitting Control Shift H, and notice how it turns sort of pale, right? So if we go into the print preview, and we find the spot, check out how there's no F sharp. We have hid the object. You can do this for a whole number of things. Um, but yeah, really useful if you just want to quickly hide something from view without deleting the object. Okay, so the next two shortcuts that I want to show you have to do with bars. They're very related. So the first one is Control B. And what that does is that actually adds a measure at the end of the piece. You can either click it or you can hold it down and it adds a billion of them until you release the, the key. Uh, a really fast way to do this because the other way to do it is if you go to home, you go over to add bars, and then you can add multiple, add single, you can you can choose whatever you want, but it's just so much faster if you just go control B and then just hold it down. Um, the other one is if you want to stick a bar in the middle of something, what you do is that you highlight measure and then hit control shift B and notice how it adds a measure after what you selected. So let me do that again. So here, check out this bar, it's got the dotted whole note. So I wanna add a bar after this measure. Control, Shift, B. We have now added an extra measure. And again, you can hold this down or you can just click. So there you go. Those are bar related. If you wanted to get rid of these bars, let's say there was a huge mistake, you regret your decision and you wanna just get rid of them. If you just highlight them and press delete, nothing's gonna happen. I'm, I'm hitting delete, you can hear it. Nothing is happening. So in order to get rid of these, you actually have to hit control, delete. Notice how it turns purple, and then it gives you this warning. Do you wanna delete these bars? Yes, get rid of them, and now they're gone. Or, you know, if you've ever used any kind of Office Suite program, you can just hit Control Z and that un undoes stuff. So a couple of different ways of removing mistakes. All right, finally, I wanna uh, talk about some note input shortcuts that you should be using to really make your workflow very fast and efficient. Okay, so I've got some empty bars and I'm just gonna write in some notes here. So you can either start by having this, you know, you, you can have your keypad, you can click with your mouse and you can do all sorts of stuff and it'll, it'll go, it'll do the thing, but it'll be really tedious if you do it that way. So instead, what you can do is you can hit N, check it out, your purple button is highlighted and you can start and then you have your note input. So note input on and off is N. Okay, from here, if you have a track, if you have a, a numpad, excuse me, a numpad on your keyboard, take a look at the numpad right now and notice how it looks remarkably like the keypad. So if you've never noticed that before, now you know. So I'm just gonna play around with the numpad, starting with this B. And uh, I'm gonna do a couple quarter notes. So B, C, A, B, D. And another thing what I'm doing is actually on the keyboard itself, you know, you have letters on your keyboard and those letters correspond with note names. So it's really, really useful. So I just did a bunch of quarter notes. Now I wanna hit a bunch of eighth notes. So all I'm doing is I'm hitting three on the numpad and if you look at the keypad on the screen, notice how it switched over. So I'm gonna go back to quarter note, which is four. Go back to eighth note, which is three. And my hand is not on the mouse. Now I'm gonna make some eighth notes. And I'm just typing, I just typed F-E-D. It's like, it's like you're writing a paper or something, you know? Uh, now I wanna have a dotted eighth note. I'm just gonna hit the dot on the numpad couple of dotted eighth notes. Oh, that looks terrible, but that's all right. Uh, I wanna have, uh, I wanna turn that into a rest. So I'm gonna hit the zero. I'm adding a bunch of dotted eighth note rests. Now I wanna have a whole note. I'm gonna make it 
an E. Cool. I'm not happy with that E. So what I can do, I want to make it up the octave because I'm a psycho. So all I'm doing is I'm controlling, I'm hitting control and I'm hitting the up arrow. Now it's up the octave. Now I want to make it go down the octave. I'm hitting down. Check it out. So easy and you don't have to drag anything. You're just clicking stuff. I'm going to go back to, I'm, I'm going to go 16th notes. So easy, right? Okay, now I've, I'm going to put a quarter note down and I want to make some triplets. Okay, so I'm going to hold control. I'm holding control. And on the actual buttons up top, uh, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0, you can hit any one of those and you can make some tuplets. So I'm going to hit 3 for triplets. And now I've made some quarter note triplets. Now I can keep going. D, E, F, G. Now I want to make some quintuplets. I'm going to hold down control. It's too long. Oops. I want to make some, well, let's go, let's make it, uh, let's make some eighth notes, go into the next bar. All right. Let's try again. Quintuplet. Bam. You have some quintuplets. So, and then you could also make nested tuplets. You can, you can go really crazy, right? Brian Fernieho would be very impressed. So the point is, if you just get your hand off the mouse and stop doing all this clicking, see much how much back and forth that is? First of all, you're going to get carpal tunnel after, after a while. And second, it's going to be inaccurate. And it's just slow, right? So if you get used to using the numpad and your keyboard and just get really comfortable with all of these little buttons, your workflow is going to be tremendously fast. And if you don't have a numpad on your keyboard itself, if you're like using a smaller laptop, for example, you can buy a numpad, a USB numpad for like 10 bucks. So highly recommend you do that because if you switch over your approach to uh, the keyboard, I guarantee that with a little bit of practice, you are going to be putting out so much faster work. So I hope that these shortcuts are useful for you. If you've never used them before, welcome. I hope you use them forever now. Um, there are so many other shortcuts that I didn't cover. Uh, Sibelius is a really powerful program. Um, so as I make more of these videos, we'll explore even more of them. If this was useful for you, please like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have more content like this up uh, in the future. Uh, until then, I hope you have a wonderful day.